Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Umber Rays, as we continue on to our Annie wish list number four video. And uh, some of you have quite rightly noted that uh, these videos are negative, dare I say even critical of the game. Yeah, uh, I think uh, nothing gets by some of the sharper of you. Uh, yeah, it's negative. Um, I will definitely admit that because that's the point of these videos. It isn't to say that I don't think that the game is perfect. I'm not going to ship you the sunshine that you want. There are other YouTubers who can do that. Um, I'm, and you know what? That's fine. I think that it is a good idea for us to be addressing the game, especially since right now we have a golden opportunity because there is some heavy competition out there because a certain other game that starts with G and ends with Ancient Impact has come out and just been a major success. I think it's a good time to leverage the game and make it more generous and better and more fun for all of us. So I think that is a really good idea. But fair is fair. I will concede that all of you have definitely outsmarted me and said that uh, these videos are negative. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I was going to do a series of more positive videos the following week about the things that I have liked for the last year. I mean, spoilers, but that's not what this video is about. So if you're really hoping for that in this video or for the next until number seven, you might want to sit this one out. Anyway, or sit the next few out, it's fine. I won't I won't begrudge you. But one more time, let's remind everyone that on October 18th at 8 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, that will be the live stream. I'm sure all of you are big boy or big girl enough that you can figure out when this uh, will be live. Of course, I will put up a live streaming notification. And if you go follow me on Twitch, Twitch might send you a live notification. But anyway, um, Come check it out. The, this is probably going to be a pretty major event. Um, if nothing else, I think they're going to talk finally about the one-year anniversary plans, probably the one-year anniversary lead-up, and it's about three weeks until the one-year anniversary, roughly. Roughly, very, very roughly. So um, every time we've gotten one of these live streams, or at least quite a few times uh, that we've had one of these live streams, there's been a collaboration announced. So I am expecting a collaboration to be announced. So, you know, go check that out. But now two minutes later, after, you know, addressing some of the negative elephants in the room, let's talk about what I would like to see for the following year, which is elemental shards. Now, I'm not going to say that I just want a generic shard that can be used or any and every character, because I think that's maybe... I do think that's a little bit too generous. And I think that, uh, specifically, that they should be very careful with how they put these character shards out there. I do not want another Brave Exvius JP. And what I mean by that is that for Brave Exvius JP, um, there was... the UOC ticket was introduced. And the UOC ticket was introduced too much and was too generous and given out too much, which you might say, wait, isn't that the fault of the company that they just gave way too many of them out? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. They probably would have just been better giving about 5,000 lapis every time they did a major screw up and just, hey, you're, you're fine. You're fine. But um, they didn't do that. And instead they gave a lot of UOCs and it brought about the uh, FES system, which the FES system was um, negative. That's the word. It was definitely negative. So it's easy to say that, um, you know, get now that we are getting into a later part of the game and something where a lot of players are looking for help with potentially limited characters or old characters or maybe even characters that aren't limited but just looking for a faster way to build them, it's a good idea to have elemental shards. And I think that is a fair thing to expect at this point in the game, because the number of limiteds more on the JP side has started to grow to which sometimes you just end up with a character like, I don't know who, let's take um, Christmas Ramada, a unit that I have that I actually got pretty, I really do like this unit. I'm really happy that I was lucky enough to get a Christmas based unit and um, it's pretty cool. It's cool to have limited time units, but there are times when you don't have enough lapis or necessarily enough money or you, you know, you're 
hurts your savings goals or whatever. You just don't want to buy the shards up to a certain point. But then you're kind of stuck with a character that can't be increased. Everyone can understand this. And to that extent, um, I would really like to see elemental shards. And you know what? I'm not going to be unfair to the developers. Make the elemental shards unable to be used against characters that, like, for instance, Gilgamesh. Gil Gilgamesh's shards are more expensive than a lot of other characters' shards. He is a UUR, meaning that he is a higher tier character. He is classified as a five star, but um, is, you know, even higher than most of the other five stars. But, you know, his shards are double the cost, and therefore, you know, because he is considered to be a more advanced character, I guess you could say. But regardless, make it so that the elemental shards don't work on these characters. Or make it a, you know, it has to be like two times the shards for him. Or anything like that. You can definitely do it. We know that this is... I, I do... Well, I have not personally played a ton of Taga, but I have heard, you know, a lot of people talking. This was a thing that was in Taga, so why not do it here? I mean, at this point, heck, you can charge for him. You've been charging for mostly everything else. See a previous video. I think it was video number three for that. But um, when it comes to character development, character development is key. And having characters that are on your bench forever that you can't use because they're limited or just because you aren't getting enough shards of them, I think it's a good idea to just pepper them into the game. You know, 5, 10, 15 shards per event. People can start saving up. Free-to-players can start saving. Um, makes it a little bit easier on them. It doesn't have to be a ton of character shards. You can even spread them out a fair bit. But I do think that even the introduction of them into the game at this point is a good idea because it does lay grounds for Into the Future. And it also potentially helps sales a little bit. It is a more encouraging thing for people to pull more if there's no, if they're, sorry, if they know that there is something that they can fall back on. And elemental shards are a fallback. It may take you a long time. It may be faster by spending money, but you always have an alternate option out. And what's more about the elemental shards is that you can still charge money for them and probably do it just as well and still make rough, you know, the same amount. Again, I don't think it's, like, I understand that character development is slower in this game. I think it is a overall positive thing to have character development slower, because it does mean that the power creep and the initial shifts in meta take more time. On the JP side, when Sakura came, even though she was basically a cane killer in the sense that she could remove guts, do a ton of holy damage, and Kane was weak to holy. Well, Kane, who was a prominent meta unit, still stayed meta for a while just because of one very, 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 very simple fact is was that it took a lot it took long for, you know, the Sakuras to be up to speed that they could compete against Kane. So I do think that character development should stay slow. I do think that the company needs to be very careful as to how much shards they do give out and how they give out and what they charge for them. This is definitely something that they should be very careful with. Double cost for elemental shards, paying twice as much yen as it is for lapis is probably a, an excessive idea. I don't think that they should do that. I don't think that they should make these things feel negative. But I do think that it should be something that you should start putting in the game sooner than later. Because again, it's just more, it's a generally just a positive thing to constantly be like, hey, you know what? I didn't get all this character finished, but I can finish them later, either through this method or this method. Because reruns at this point don't seem to be a thing that could be relied upon a ton. We haven't gotten a ton of repeats of the Christmas units and, you know, when are the Halloween units, when are the summer units going to repeat. For anybody who doesn't, has not finished those characters, it's just going to lay the groundwork in the future for more people to constantly be like, well, I don't want to pull a limited unit, I, I don't have enough lapis, um, there's no point, I, I don't, there's nothing to fall back upon. So I do think that safety net is a really good idea, and I do think you can start charging people for it. Hey, maybe you can even start charging people. Stop charging for something else. 
I don't know. Could be an idea. There's a lot of different routes, but I do think that uh, the one year anniversary is the perfect time to start doing this. Slow, fine at the start, and then maybe a little bit faster later when character development and events pick up, pace, who knows. But in the meantime, I do think that elemental shards would be a great bonus for every single player, whether you are a the whaliest of whales or the freest to play tuna that there ever was. Um, you know, it does occur to me that in the communities of all these gacha games, I, there should be a fish for plankton. I don't know gotta be something but either way i do think it's just good for all the players i think it's good for the health of the game and i think it is a positive thing for it to be in the game we all know it's coming so just start doing it give your players a little bit of a bonus this one year anniversary i guarantee you positive word of mouth goes a long way to a game's longevity anyway thank you very much for watching take care and see you next time